Hi everybody, this is Joe slash Tools of CC, and today I'm going to be covering how to implement a state machine for your platformer game inside of Construct 3. I'm also going to be giving a bunch of pixel art away for free, uh, so look for the link in the description down below and go and download it and implement it uh, in your own games. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Okay, so if you haven't familiarized yourself with the platform behavior inside of Construct 3, go ahead and check out the manual here. Lots of good information, but it's very intuitive and it will get you up and running inside of your game very quickly. We're gonna build on top of this to implement a state machine that will allow us to control our player on the map. And we'll also implement a couple of more advanced states such as an edge grab and a wall slide behavior, or state. So now let's jump over into the editor. Here's our layout, and this is some of the artwork that you'll be able to go and download from the itch page. Uh, this was made by David Phyllis. I'll have a link down to his uh, fiber page in the description down below. So thank you, David. This is an awesome set of uh, artwork. Um, I have some layering here that lets me parallax some of the levels, uh, some of the background art. I have my main level, I have my player layer, and then I also have some decorations in front. Um, if you look here, mostly this is just setting up a little area for us to test uh, running around and jumping and landing on platforms and all that good stuff. So one thing to know when you're implementing a platformer, uh, it's very common to have a uh, player box like so and player art that you layer on top of your player. So this player is what we're actually going to be doing all the controls with and the player art is just going to live on top of that and show the different animations for what state we're in. So when we build a state machine that says we're running, we're going to run, uh, show the run animation when we're idling, the idle and the jump and so on and so on. So that's the basic idea. So we're going to add this as a child to the player and make this invisible so that this looks like what you're controlling, but we actually have all the collisions and everything being handled on this uh, sprite object here called the player. Now, if you look here on the instance variables, I have a variable called state, and I have a couple of other things, default gravity, and this edge grab jump delay, I don't even think I ended up using, so ignore that for now. On the behavior side, I have a couple things. I have platform, uh, which is the key one that you'll want to make sure you're familiar with. And you can see here, it has a bunch of variables that you can control. Um, double jump, I have enabled, and uh, you can play with these during runtime or just set them statically. I also have scroll too. You can implement your own more advanced camera to follow your, your player, which is fairly common. But for now, I just threw a scroll two onto this guy. And then I bound it to the layout so you can't run off the edge. And I do have a timer that I also put on there for a couple of uh, use cases. All right, let's go ahead and hit play. All right, so you can see right away, I've got my idle, I've got my run, I've got my jump, I got my double jump. And let's see if I can edge grab. Oh, there we go, edge grab, and also wall slide. So that's, uh, you know, where we're at. And I haven't implemented attack, but that's fairly simple to do once you see what we're doing here. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the event sheet and see how this was done. All right, right away, I just have two main groups. The first group is WAD, which is really just me implementing WA and D to simulate, you know, jump left and right so i don't have to use the arrow keys um, that's an easy one to implement and then player controls where all the meat is so the very first thing is on start of layout i'm doing a few things i'm setting positions of certain items and adding children so that one player we're putting on top the player art we're putting on top of the player object and we're adding it as a child so it moves with it and we're setting the initial state to idle i'm also going to set my platform gravity to my default gravity that i set because when I do my edge grab, I'm actually gonna change that to zero. So he hangs there. So that's why I'm changing this back and forward. And I actually have a, a variable called default gravity. Um, also, I have a text object just to let us know what state we're in. <laughs> and lastly, um, there's some other cleanup items that we handle in the beginning. Now during every tick, there's a couple things we're gonna do. We're going to set the animation to the player.state. And that is keeping our art in sync with the state of our player. So when I'm running, it's running. Uh, when I'm idle, it's idling, etc. And I'm also going to make sure I'm updating that text so it demonstrates to you guys in this demo what state we're in. The next thing we want to handle is mirroring our art. So obviously, uh, we don't want to 
have two sets of art for right and left. We're gonna make use of the mirror and we're gonna control that based off of if I'm pushing left or pushing right. And also I'm going to utilize this trigger that if I happen to also be on the ground, set the state to run. Uh, but mostly so left, make sure it's mirrored, right, make sure it's not mirrored and set the state to run if I'm on the floor. And this is why we like the platform behavior because it makes it really easy to have conditions to trigger what state you wanna be in. This platform is on floor is an example of that. If you look at inside the platform, you have all these conditions to work with and you also have all these triggers to work with. And this lets us trigger the different states that we want to use. All right, now I have another situation here for, I'm gonna show you how you get into the grab state in a moment, but if you are in the grab state, and you happen to press left or right, I want to uh, set my gravity back to my default gravity because you're gonna see I'm gonna set it to zero and I'm gonna set the state to idle and I'm actually gonna reset my double jump so that if you want to, after you edge grab, you can actually double jump again. You can decide whether or not to implement that in your own game. As far as um, there is a edge case here that I wanted to handle that if you happen to be holding down both left and right, or A and D at the same time, and then you release one. I wanted to make sure that it set the mirroring and the run state correctly. So that's what this section's doing. And this is a nice and easy one. So when the platform is landed, uh, A, I wanna create a little land effect. And then I also wanna handle, if I happen to have left or right down, I wanna set the state to run. Otherwise, I wanna set to idle. So when I land, if I'm not saying left or right, it's idle. If I am, set it to run. Next is whenever I stop my character, set them to idle. So that's an easy one. And then this gets a little bit more complicated. So uh, whenever I jump, if I'm in the state of edge grab, okay, I'm hanging on and I decide to jump, I'm going to set it to double jump because uh, that's the animation I wanna show. And I wanna reset my gravity back to default gravity. And I also wanna implement this delay. And there's some a reason for this is I wanna have a timer so that uh, it doesn't immediately try to edge grab again, because you're gonna see that the way that we handle edge grabbing is kind of unique, but it saves us some time in how we lay out our levels. And I'm gonna show you guys this trick in just a moment. So we wanna make sure that we start this delay so it, it doesn't let us trigger edge grab. I'm gonna use this as a condition later on. And then also I wanna decide when I'm jumping, am I a double jump or am I jump for my artwork? And basically I just did a simple trick here that if, if my vector Y is anything other than zero up or down, use it to double jump. Otherwise set it to jump. So if I'm on the ground and I'm just going left and right, jump. If I'm going up or down, it's a double jump. I'm assuming I'm in the air. Now, when I finish my jump animation and it's not a state of edge grab, set my state to idle. And when I finish my double jump animation, set my state to idle. Now, similarly, when you guys implement your attack animations, which I'm not gonna show here, like say you use space bar to trigger an attack, you'll want on the finish of your attack animation to similarly set it back to idle. But you can choose how to implement that in your game. All right, so this is the tricky part. We're gonna show how to do an edge grab and a wall slide here. So every tick, I'm basically duplicating this check, whether it's mirrored or not mirrored. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make use of my tile sets to decide if I'm at an edge. So let's talk about how we might do this. Now, one way you might consider doing an edge grab is to put these little edge triggers or some sort of collision box right next to the edge. And that's valid. And you can totally figure out how to do it by checking for collisions on that edge grab. But it can be annoying to have to place these on all these different edges around your game. So an alternative to doing that is to make use of the tile set uh, and to figure out if it's empty above and if it's filled right next to you. And basically you can discern, hey, that should be an edge. So there's a couple of things here. Tile set the tile at. So we're gonna try to get the tile value at a certain position. And the way to check that is you say, all right, what's um, my tile set position to tile X player.x minus this thing and tile position to y. And so, so what we're trying to do here is we're making use of a few things. This position to tile x lets us convert a pixel position to a tile position. Because remember when you use this tile at, you're passing it how many rows and columns within the tile set 
am I? So if your tile set is 16 by 16 um, and you pass it, you know, you know, two and two here, it's going to look for the second column and the second row, or I guess the third because it's zero based, but you get the idea. And we're going to make use of our player position to pass that into this to get which tile I'm at. And then I'm going to use that to use the tile at to figure out, is it negative one? And negative one implies that it's empty. So what this is doing is it's basically saying, all right, if I'm mirrored and I'm looking then to the left of me because I'm mirrored, uh, let's say, let's check, all right, my player width divided by two and player.x, which basically is just my left edge. I could have written this a little bit different, but the left edge of my bounding box. Uh, and then I'm also giving myself a little bit of edge tolerance, which I set as a variable. I'm gonna use that as my X. And then for my Y, I'm gonna use my player position minus 20. And if that is minus one, AKA I'm empty and minus 10, which is just, you know, slightly lower is not equal to minus one. So at any point, if I go over there and between minus 10 and minus 20, I happen to be hitting that edge where up here it's empty and down here is a full cell like I, uh, any of my tile set art, so aka it's not minus one, then I've identified an edge. So then I can say, all right, and I'm, I'm not already in an edge grab and I don't have that edge grab delay running. And that's so that we don't get kind of stuck there. So if you jump or whatever else, it doesn't try to latch right back on. And then I also put in this, you can decide whether or not you want this to be a thing. I made it so that my vector Y had to be greater than zero. So that you have to be falling. So on your way up, you don't just grab an edge. You have to be falling on your way down and then you grab an edge. And once you satisfy all those conditions, you set your state to edge grab, you set your gravity to zero, you uh, freeze your, your player by setting the vector Y to zero. And I actually latch my player to a specific pixel position so that it looks like correctly on the pixel art that, he, that he's hanging on. And I make use of this snap Y and snap X. So um this is a is is, is a good one to, to to make use of for your for your snap position and you can use this on uh for both if you're looking right or if you're looking left okay now that's edge grab let's go ahead and actually just play real quick so we can talk about that one more time okay so i'm checking is this spot negative one and is this one filled and as soon as it is snap to this position all right, that's what we just accomplished. And it works on both sides. Uh, you're looking, you know, am I mirrored or am I not mirrored? And then the math is slightly different. So that's how you do it. And then you don't have to place all those collision boxes all over the place. All right. And then if you're hanging on and you want to do a wall slide. Uh, so let's talk about this. So, bum, 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 bum. all right. So if I'm mirrored, and I don't meet these conditions and my platform is falling, AKA my players on my way down. And I do this check again, where it does not equal minus one, AKA something to the left of me or to the right of me, depending on if I'm mirrored has a value, then I'm going to set my state to wall slide. Now it is important to note. I did put this here. Um, you can also make use of this platform has wall to left or platform has wall to right. And that will also let you trigger your wall slide. I was playing with it. I ultimately just settled on this for my logic, but I think both are totally valid. Uh, so you can either make use of the same trick I did over here, checking your tile set, or you can use this built in condition. I just wanted to leave it here to show you a platform has wall to left or platform has wall to right does a very similar check. And if you're following and that's the case, set the state, the wall slide. Okay, and really that's it guys. Um, I have some effects down here, uh, which basically says if I'm running and it's a certain frame, AKA the foot's on the ground, kick up some dust. And when I land, um, you can see up here, I already implement that, implement a land effect. And then on the end of the animations, just destroy them. And that's our game, that's our template here. So go ahead and download it on itch. Let me know what you think. 
Um, also, if you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. It's free for you to do and it makes a big difference for me. I uh, really uh, appreciate any time I see a subscription come in. So uh, hopefully this is useful for you guys. Enjoy the free art. And also thank you for recently reaching 500 subscribers. Uh, that's an awesome milestone. I never thought I'd actually get that far. So really appreciate all those who have subscribed already. And before we wrap up, big thank you to my patron supporters, James Welch, Clone13, McCall, Stevie, Samuel, and Pierre. You guys are awesome. Super appreciate your support. And for those who are interested, if you do support me on Patreon, you do get access to all my game art for free that I have paid on my itch page and also help support additional free artwork for the community. So thank you, everybody. Have a good day.